We're back here at NRA headquarters at the National Farms Museum. I'm here with Andrew Dalton at the museum. And Andrew, we're here for Curator's Corner, and I like the shift of gears from the last ones we saw to this. I, I, I'm intrigued, I'm <laughs> curious, and a little confused. So tell us what we're looking at. Well, we see this, uh, this strange looking rifle on top here uh, with the big fish belly magazine. Right, that's um, the confused part. And it, it's not something that you see normally. Um, but uh, believe it or not, that this gun, which is a M1941 Johnson rifle, actually competed against the venerable M1 Garand uh, to be adopted as the primary uh, rifle for the U.S. military in the late 1930s, early 1940s. Um, so the guy that designed this rifle, um, Mr. Johnson, he was a, a Harvard graduate, Harvard Law, and you know, went and worked at Springfield Armory and oversaw helped to oversee the development of the M1 Garand. Well, being a smart guy, he decides, I think the M1 Garand's a little flawed. I'm going to come up with my own design and submit it. I can it. do it better. Right. Uh, so what he came up with is this gun here. Uh, and what's really unique about this, aside from this strange-looking ma internal magazine, is it is a delayed blowback rifle. So unlike the Garand, which is taps gas from the barrel and cycles the action that way, right. this gun actually uses a short recoil delay. So if you can actually see... If I press on the barrel like that, oh, wow. we see the mechanism actually starts to operate. So what will happen is when you pull the trigger and the round goes off, the barrel and the bolt actually move back as one piece for a short period of time until the pressures in the chamber get to a safe enough point, the barrel disengages, moves back forward, and the bolt continues to operate. The barrel actually moves after you fire the, the right, fire. Right, right. That's interesting. That'll come into play later. Yeah. Um, which one of the reasons why this gun didn't make it and didn't beat the Garand. Um, so in the late 30s, uh, Johnson submits his rifle to be to compete against the Grand, which had already been adopted at that point. But uh, you know, he said, "Well, why don't you look take a look at mine?" And um, you know, they go through. There's a, a bunch of issues with his gun. Uh, number one being, of course, you can't mount a bayonet on a barrel that moves. If you go to use the bayonet, yeah. it actually pushes the barrel and the action out of battery, so the gun won't fire. Um, and also the, the barrel, or the uh, bayonet, the weight of the bayonet actually impedes that movement. Right, um, so that's a problem right yeah. there for, so a battle, that, for a battle rifle, you really need to have a bayonet. Right, right, yeah. and Johnson, again, being the smart guy that he was, didn't think that the bayonet was necessary, which is why he went to this sort of system. Okay. In modern combat, you don't really need a knife on the end of the gun anymore. Right, no. Um, uh, but this gun in particular, um, they were uh, adopted in small amounts by the Marine Corps. Uh, the Marine Corps was still using the O3 Springfields uh, at, the, at the start of the war. There weren't enough mm -hmm. grants going into production, and the ones that were were going to the Army. Uh, so the Marine Corps adopted a bunch of the semi-automatic uh, rifles, and then uh, Johnson also designed a light machine gun that went along with this. Uh, so the Marine Corps used that in the Pacific Theater for a, a short part, portion of time until they could get uh, M1 Garand um, production sped up to catch up with demand. So tell us about that magazine. So this magazine, and these are... Uh, Dummy rounds, no powder, no primer, but uh, you could actually, it's a rotary magazine, okay. uh, so it's kind of like a Ruger 1022. It's got that little rotary piece in there, but you could single load through the gate here, so it'll actually load that way, or it will take 03 uh, Springfield five round stripper clips, and you get 10 okay. rounds in this magazine. Okay, and finally, what, what, why this part of the design here? It's just the cut up. Heat dissipation. Okay, so that's just, um, yeah. The interesting thing about this is after the war, of course, you could get these surplus. This one was uh, obtained by NRA. It's got the NRA test marks on the stock up here. Uh, unfortunately, there was a fad after the Second World War where let's sporterize everything. Well, they sporterized this Johnson. Uh, it's not uh, correct anymore as mm -hmm. it was when it was given to the military. Uh, the serial number range actually puts it in one of the batches that may have actually been issued to the Marine Corps too. Wow. So, um, uh, it's kind of interesting in the fact that they, you know, change the stock and uh, the front sight's different and right. the rear sight's are different. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little different than what it would have been uh, issued during the war. But still interesting to compare the technologies going with, a, with such a well-known rifle here just to see who the other sort of folks in there who are trying to vie for that, uh, for that prize, and if you that, will. Want so, that fat contract. Yeah, pretty neat um, stuff. Very cool. Love the technology in the firearms industry. Good or bad, not. It's just very interesting. I mean, here's the first time I've ever seen the barrel where the barrel moves when the gun fires. 
That's pretty neat stuff. Andrew Dalton, thank you so much for some great stuff here on Curator's Corner. And how can folks either come and see these? I, personally, I'm now, now I'm here, so I'm a little prejudiced. I love coming in here to, to spend time to look at these firearms uh, up close, just like here we're doing Alan Camera. But you can do it that way if you can get here, or you can do it on the web as well. Right. If you can't come see us in person, you can just go on your computer, go to www.nramuseums.com. Uh, you can see all the firearms we have on display right there on our online galleries. But if not, you get here in the D.C. area, get over to Fairfax, Virginia, NRA headquarters, and, and, and do the twofer. Come to the museum, and then, oh, you do the threefer, you can go to the cafe end of the range. Yeah, we do here. have the cafe. And a range, too. Awesome. Andrew, thanks for so much for what you're doing. Thanks for being on Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.